If God created a world without no sin, why would he have to get rid of us? Why would he have to get rid of us humans? Well, the thing is, is this, us humans, we are corrupt. And if you don't believe so, just watch this video. Give your brother a couple cars. Give your brother a couple cars. He can have a couple. He can have a Okay, it's kind of cute that the little, little kids are fighting, but the thing is is that they are fighting and they're not sharing. If we were to watch this happen with like some adults, like somewhere randomly at Walmart, just not sharing or they're trying to get something, like you can always see at Black, Black Friday when they're trying to fight over things. That's not cool, just like not mature. But when a kid does it, it's kind of cute. Uh, I'll just be honest. But the thing is is that there's something in our hearts that are selfish and we and we want what we want. People think God's sitting there in heaven and he's looking around, all right, I just waiting for somebody to do something bad. The thing is, is that God's not like that. We do so many bad things that he doesn't even have to like search for it. He just looked down like, oh, there he goes again. There he goes again. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> he's sitting there like waiting for somebody to do something wrong. But I do agree with people that say that good people shouldn't shouldn't go to hell. And I, I, I believe that. But the thing is, is that uh, there is no good person on this, on this earth. We're all bad, we're all evil. Like in our hearts, we're all evil. The Bible even says it as well. We can look at Romans 3, 9 through 20. It says, this one's a long verse, so, so stay with me here. But what shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all, for we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, there is no one who seeks God. All have turned away, they have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit, the poison of vipers is on their lips, their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says it to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law, rather though the law of we become conscious of our sins. Okay, that one's a big, big verse to, to look at. And we can also look at Mark 7, 20-23. And it says, He went on, What comes out of a person is what defiles them, for it is from within out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evil come all these evils come from inside and defile a person. Okay, he doesn't send good people to hell because there is no good person. And it's not just God's like this is not just what the Bible says. We can even look at history, okay? Like history backs us up. Uh, we can look at GK Chesterton he once said that certain new theologians, despite original sin, which is the only part of Christian theology which can really be proved. If you just look back at mankind, you can see all the evil that's been done. Dr. Clay Jones studied human evil and suffering as much as anybody in this world. And he decided to study evil in depth and go further into it. Study the 20th century and all the evil that happened into it, okay? And he began with the assumption that there was only a few deranged people that caused all these mass evil. But the thing is, is that it's not just those few deranged people like Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pots, but it was all these masses of people that started all this. Okay, here are a few examples from the 20th century that, that he found. Okay, we can look at the Chinese government, for example, which are responsible for 25 to 30 million people dying. We can look at the Russians responsible for starving 6 million Ukrainians and also the Japanese government brutalizing at, at least 300,000 Chinese, which has known as the rape of Najing. In a way, even the Nazis looked at it, they were like, all right, this is crazy. I mean, and just look at American culture, okay? Tens of millions of abortions. And you might say, well, abortion, that doesn't count. It's, I mean, it's, I mean, there's no life. Well, the thing is, is that us humans, we justify killing a baby because it works for us. It's convenient for us that we don't have to take care of a child. It's just sick and that's just wrong. Okay, we can't just justify that because it works for us. That's how evil we are. Even looking at the practice of eugenics and saying that we want to make a superior race, 
That's evil, okay? That's evil. You can even look at Jeffrey Dahmer, all right, who ate his victims. Masses of amount of evil is not done by just individuals, but rather groups of big amounts of people. God doesn't send good people to hell because in reality, there is no good person. When evil happens, we often hear this word that it's inhumane to do those things. But the thing is, is that we can't really use that word because inhumane means non-human. The thing is, humans do those things. So it's like, mm, we can't really use that word. I mean, you can look at the daily news or you can look at the history of the world and you're going to look back on like the Holocaust and all these different things. And it all starts with people, humans. It's, it, it grows and it grows and it grows and all because of selfish ambition. Okay, well then why would God send anybody to hell? Like it's like some people only do some like some bad things. Like why would he send anybody to hell? Like why is he why is he so strict on us? God doesn't send people to hell. People choose to go to hell, okay? People choose to have their will be done rather than what God's will be done. People say that they wouldn't even follow what God said if even if he was real because they'd rather live in their sin and they would rather do what they want on here on earth and so that they can have a good, good life and then and live their best life here. All right, human autonomy is strong and God's given us that free will to, to say, hey, you can do whatever you want. I'm not gonna force you to pick you up and buy, oh, nope. And then you run away and then you're like, oh, nope. Like he's not gonna keep doing that if you choose to run away from him. And God's a respecter of this. He's not gonna just keep you know, moving you around and say, nope, this is what you're doing. Nope, this is what you're doing. If you choose to fall away from him, he's gonna let you do it. Like criminals choose to go to jail and people say, no, criminals don't choose to go to jail. It's like they commit an act, murdering somebody or stealing something. They've chosen to take the risk of going to jail. They chose that risk, choosing murder, choosing theft. They're choosing to jail or to prison. God doesn't get any pleasure from sending people to hell. He's not sitting there like, like just like sitting there like ho ho ho, like looking at people uh, tortured in, uh, in hell. It's like he does not get any pleasure whatsoever by saying, he, he mourns and he wishes that he would have just chose to follow him. We can look at Ezekiel 18, 23 and it says, do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the sovereign Lord? Rather, am I not pleased when they turn from their ways and live? If God doesn't want us to go to hell, then why doesn't he just forgive us? Like, why can't he just say, oh, you guys are all forgiven because I love you so much. Well, the thing is, is that he, he just can't do that. Otherwise, you're not going to realize how you know great God is. And you might be thinking, well, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, let's look at a, a, a parenting perspective. You say your kid is with another kid and he's just wailing on another kid. Boom, boom, boom. And you just go, little Jimmy, you better stop. You better stop. You better stop, but you never, there's no consequence. He doesn't know what the consequences are for his actions. He's going to keep doing it. Okay. But if you give him some consequences of what he's going to, little Jimmy, if you, if you keep doing that, I'm going to take away something or I'm going to spank you or whatever. Most likely he's going to stop. But the thing is, if you never do that, then he's going to realize that you're kind of bluffing and then he's going to keep doing it. But God doesn't want you to keep doing things that are not of his ways. He has to have a punishment for it and to, so, to fear so that we may fear him and realize that we don't want to do those things. Okay? So he keeps pointing us back to him. And because God can do anything, he's not bound by nothing, but he, he only wants to do things that are to his moral nature. Okay? He needs to be a just God. He needs to, he's a God of justice and righteousness. Therefore, he can't just be cool with sin. He can't just be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like, don't worry about a dog. Like, like, just do what you want, and then we'll go to heaven, and we'll just have a big party. If he said, if he just brings people that like that to, to, to heaven, like, heaven's not going to be perfect. Like, it's going to be all jacked up. <laughs> it's going to be like, like, like earth. I mean, God wants us to, to be in a great relationship with him and to follow his ways so that when we get up to heaven, we realize... Like, man, that, that earth life, like, like that was not fun at all. Okay, like, we do not want to be, I do not want to go back. If nobody is perfect, nobody, uh, everybody's evil, how can we go to heaven if nobody's, if everybody's evil? God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us, to pay for our debts, to pay for all, all the things that we've done, all the lying that we've done, all the cheating we've done, all the stealing, all the murder, and just because I've never personally murder somebody 
when I was younger, I used to be like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. If you weren't looking at your self-interest of not going to jail, you might just commit that, commit murder. Are you willing to, to accept this free gift of salvation, the free gift of forgiveness from God? He's offering it to every single one. He's not just offering it to a few people. He's offering to anybody that chooses to, to accept him. I don't like, I don't personally like the thought of knowing that people that I've done life with are in hell. And I mean, it's, it's hard. But the thing is, is that they chose that and they not to do what, what God's will was. Jesus had the most clarity and the authority of, of, over anybody about hell. And he was willing to talk about hell because he knew that the, the torture and all the, the pain that will happen in hell. And he was willing to come down and warn us all like, hey, everybody, hell is not a great place to be. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't want to go there. Like, it's not like hell is like this place where rock stars are going and like, it's gonna be like this fun time, like, and it's gonna be all this rebellion and stuff. But the thing is, is it, no, it's not gonna be that. Don't don't think that way. Okay, it's it's gonna be just torment, gnashing of the teeth, weeping and gnashing of the teeth. That is not something that you're gonna be like, yeah, let's rock out and all this stuff. Like, that's something that Satan wants you to believe. The thing is, that's just not true. Is that Jesus came and he he told us like this is what's gonna happen, and uh, this is what what hell is gonna be like. If you want to choose Jesus and not hell, the thing is, is that you can and, and you're willing to. You just ask him into your heart. It's easy as A, B, C. So A, admit that you're a sinner and B, believe that you that Jesus came and died on the cross for you and C, choose to uh, place your faith in him. So I'll link the video that I got some of the information from, like it was from Sean McDowell. Sean McDowell is a uh, apologetic theologian guy and he's a, he's a really smart dude. To be honest, uh, you can also look at Dr. Clay uh, Jones's works and stuff. He is really good when it comes to uh, evil. He's studied evil so much. And I'm just a moron. I'm somebody that doesn't really know that much, um, but I'm learning how to defend my faith and knowing that, because I know that Jesus Christ is true, what he's done. And even when people tell me that he's not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to figure out if he is right or wrong. But if if this question still trips you up, like I didn't answer what you guys were uh, asking, just comment down below. Like, can you be more clear? Or is, this is where I where I don't understand, and I'll be willing to do my best to clear the things up. Whether you're watching for as a Christian uh, doubting your faith, or if you're watching as a person that you know believes in a different God, or if you're somebody that just doesn't believe in God, and I I, I want to do my best to communicate what I believe in. Uh, best to, to you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you don't like the video, dislike the video. Put your questions down below. I love you guys. Peace. Lifting his name on high.